Thanks for staying with us. Now, Robert Kiyosaki said, and I quote, financial freedom is available to those who learn about it and work for it. Now, Benjamin Franklin also said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. How financially literate are you? And how much are you willing to invest in gaining that knowledge? Now, let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038463. So I'll bring in our guest like in two minutes. But Isi, how financially literate are you? <laughs> in fact, one of my first questions is on for those of us that are not, <laughs> we don't know math. Are we? Do we need financial <laughs> literacy? Because can we so, learn? Mm. Is it? Is it? Is it's so important? Because I had serious issues until my husband came into my life. I had serious issues with finances. Managing money, yeah. Yes. If you just tell me, oh, but oh yes, now I can buy it. You know, I didn't know how to manage money until Nameka Christopher Fadila came into my life. <laughs> And that was the end. So I learned the hard way hmm. how to manage money. Are you sure you really learned? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Seriously. Oh, me savings. Before, hmm, I had too many things to do with money. <laughs> I will not save my own. <laughs> well, well, are are the the she's back. <laughs> and she's the CEO of Money Stewards, an investment <laughs> firm with locations in Lagos, Atlanta, Houston, Kenya, and London. As mm -hmm. CEO, she leads a team of wealth management executives with expertise in diverse foreign investment. And she's joined us again, whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> live in studio. Thank you so much. You know, because she's going back, <laughs> let me just tell them. So we had to quickly squeeze in one more. You know, we couldn't get enough of what the we next, had last The next time she'll come via Zoom. We can't Anyhow, let her we'll that. still be bringing her some house. <laughs> but, you know, it's always interesting when we have you live as well. Yes. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you very much. So I was going to ask, um, right, um, if we were to define who a financially literate person is, right? Maybe we should use that as a base, as a foundation. If you were to describe a financially literate person, what would that definition be? Thank you very much. <laughs> well, first of all, thanks for having me again. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. I feel like I'm home. Yes, you um, are. <laughs> I'm home, right? Thank you so much uh, mm -hmm. for having me. So you talked about basis of financial literacy. I think the first most important thing about financial literacy is personal finance, having the ability to, ability to handle your own personal finance. And what is personal finance? It, it, it's you having, okay, this is your income. You earn $100 a month, let's say. You've decided that you want to put 20% aside for savings, maybe another 20% towards investment, and the 60% towards your expenses. Mm -hmm. Now, you should itemize your expense, so basically your, your maybe your utility bills, your, your rent, even though you pay it on an annual basis, mm -hmm. it's important to, to, to budget it on a monthly basis. So you have to understand budgeting. But I realize that a lot of people struggle with budgeting. So this is what I advise people to do. When you get your money, the first thing is pay yourself first. Mm. We're often the last person to pay ourselves. Exactly. Because you have a whole lot of requirements and bills and families to take care of. But the first thing you need to do is pay yourself first. So put that 20% mm. aside, if that's what you've decided, or 10%. For savings. Can, for savings. You okay. can start with 10%, mm. but I'm a believer of 20%. Okay. okay? Because it's just the biblical principle of what mm. Joseph did. And we knew how the story ended. Mm. All the surrounding nations, they lacked. And Joseph, um, Egypt had more than more. enough because they saved 20%. Mm -hmm. So, but you save 20% up to your emergency fund. I think for Nigerian climate, emergency fund should be at least eight months. Mm. I know a lot of personal finance people say six months. I believe mm. eight months. Because uh, in Nigeria, we need cash. We just need a lot of money to do a lot of things. Exactly. Your, how, your car gets wrecked. It's unlikely your insurance will take care of it. Mm -hmm. sure. All the time, you need to pay for it. Bills, hospital bills. Mm -hmm. NHS is in, available in UK. Mm -hmm. You know, some, some medical... Um, Even the uh, HMOs don't cover so much in Nigeria. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you need to have that. But it's just the, way, the, the nature of the country, the way we work. Mm -hmm. We have a heavy expenses that come, comes exactly. at once. And it's also a country whereby you can't just pick up odd jobs. So maybe you're a manager in the bank and you lose your job. You can't like go to 
you know, you know, in same in America, you be like the same money. exactly. You can just go to Walmart, do a mm. few hours mm. until you get your feet together. It's mm. likely what you want to go to Mr. Biggs and start or being a cashier or something. No so way. all of that factor makes me think that you know, have about probably nine months to a year mm. emergency savings if you can. And once you're done with your emergency savings, now investment is the ultimate multiplier. Mm -hmm. Last week. I think you should watch the last week's show because I talked in detail about the four sources Absolutely. of income. I'm not going to repeat it. Absolutely. But once you pay yourself first, you remove your, which is paying yourself savings. No, the 20%. Also, that's 20%. Okay. And then try and also do 20% towards investments. Okay. Okay. Put that, and that's also part of paying yourself first. And just make sure your expenses within six, six, uh, mm. 60%. Now, because I know a lot of people struggle with budgeting, they say, I don't know how to make the check bounce, I don't mm. have to do it. So I just say, keep it simple. Start with keeping it simple. If you remove 40%, you know, you do all of those things, and you know your, your expenses within, is within 60%, don't maximum 70%, mm. all right? Then once you pay yourself first and you put it aside, mm. then you just run the expense for the month. Hmm. I won't talk about the percentage or no percentage for those of us that don't know math. Mm -hmm. But let's go into this. Basically, education, do you think it's a criterion for financial literacy? Education? What do you mean education? Like a degree? Formal education. education. For formal education, for example. Not necessarily. Do you think it's it There are people that all they have is high school degree mm -hmm. and they're doing phenomenally well with their finances. And they're Goldman Sachs managers or bank managers hmm. that they're woeful with their finances. Mm. So mm. don't ever th fall into the myth of thinking because somebody's a banker, they mm. know how to manage money, no way. <laughs> Some people, th the principle of money management still remains the same. Firstly, understand personal finance, which is what I mentioned mm. earlier. The next step is to now master the art of investments because investment is the multiplier effect. Mm. The personal finance helps you manage money save money, mm. you know, understand emergency savings and all of that, budgeting. Mm -hmm. But it is the investment, understanding the investment part, which is the multiplier effect, which will now begin to accelerate your growth, okay. the growth of your money. So it's not in, enough to stay just within personal finance or, or you know, just manage my money, 10% here, 20% here, no. Exactly. Understand investments. And what is investment? There are two mm. major types of investments which you need to understand. Paper assets, which is your stocks, your bonds, you know, if you're into kind of cryptocurrency, forex, and so on and so forth. And, and then fixed. the second part of it is real estate. You need to understand both. Now, when you understand both, you will make critical mistakes in your Which investment you career. Which do you think is better? Better as in what? what? Which is better? Is it the fixed, um, fixed um, assets or the... Um, you said real estate we and or paper about real estate. asset, which paper is better. Asset, yes. You need both. And I thank you for asking that question. Yes. Because I get a lot of people that say, oh, real estate is the best investment ever. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not true. That is totally not true. It, your investments is not really about the investment that you make. It's more about your behavior. Mm -hmm. Do you understand money management? Do you understand money psychology? And when you're going to psychology, you're talking about managing your emotions. Yeah, not, right. you know, personal finance and investment is you physically handling money. Mm -hmm. but money psychology is the ability to master your emotions making critical decisions is this investment for the long term in the short term there might be misses and you know but are you and willing are to benefits? stay the long haul that is you need to mm. understand your psychology so it's not really about the investment it's not about whether a stocks is better than real estate real estate better yeah. than stocks no because you have they both have their advantages mm. so stocks for instance now you can easily liquidate mm -hmm. get your money immediately because sometimes mm. you need money you need it now Real estate, you, it's almost impossible to, re, to, to uh, liquidate your real estate within 24 hours. Mm. Sometimes it depends, especially when in a harsh climate like Nigeria, it could be there for a year or two yes. when you're still trying to sell this property. Uh -huh. In the meantime, the stocks <laughs> will help you out. Yeah. Do you get what okay. I'm saying? So you can't say real estate is better than that. But also, it is good to have real estate because it gives you some sort of passive income, mm. you know, okay. and so on. So basically, you need both. Mm. And mm. then another thing, let me now take it a step notch. So you understand personal finance, you understand mm. investment. Mm. Now you have to understand global investments. <laughs> Why is global investment important? Because we live again in a tough and harsh terrain. Our Absolutely. currency, we have high inflation rates. Mm -hmm. We have uh, currency <laughs> depreciation. Mm -hmm. You know, we have all these metrics that affect you at the microeconomic level. Exactly. So for you to put all your eggs all your investment in the in, same in country, you do yourself no justice. So mm -hmm. now, you now take it up notch by investing in the global market. And when I mean in global market, again, 
paper assets mm. and real assets. Yes, yes, yeah. mm. You know, so you investing in in you know uh, the global. You're buying foreign stocks, all right, and then you're also buying foreign real estate. Hmm. Do you understand That's what I'm saying? That's if I should take your brain and put it <laughs> <in my laughs> now. So, Honestly. So I, I love what you're saying because I, mm. I actually just thought about it. I say, um, why is there a very big deficit when it comes to financial literacy? Is it that it is the way it's been presented to us over the years? It's not interested. I mean, it's so boring when it comes to when they're reading business news or they're reading finance, anything. Everybody just looks away. Why is that so? And how can we make... Um, personal finance a bit sexier. You know? <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. I think you've actually answered the question. Yeah. The way it's been presented. So I was in, a, I was in a, a, a financial program one day and an economist guy came in and he was just reeling out figures. And I'm thinking, I'm in the space. And I'm, you can hardly get my buy-in. Exactly. None of these people understand what you're saying because they came in here talking mm. about the outlook and the forecast mm. and throwing out all these economic jargons Terms. that I'm thinking, you know, Let's start from the basics. Remove all the facade. Mm -hmm. How are you handling your money? Mm -hmm. Because even if you know all the inflation rates there is to know in Nigeria, how are you handling your money? It's all about you mm -hmm. to start with. If, if you can't handle your own money, trust me, you can't handle the family exactly. finance. So, so that's the first way is the presentation. So because I got in through personal finance, I understood personal finance, I mastered it, and then I graduated to investment finance, and mm -hmm. I took it to the global level. That's exactly how I started. So I understand that it's starting from the basics. You just understand personal finance. There are different places you can read. There are lots of blogs, a lot of information online about mm -hmm. how you can master it. A lot of tools you can, you can use for that. So yes, it's the way, firstly, it's the way it's been presented. And mm -hmm. second of all, also, I think our mindset and our background uh, has also disadvantaged mm. us. Uh, like I said earlier on, we've picked up, for those people that even call themselves financially savvy, mm. you find out that the only thing they know about finance is the ability to save money. Yes. Now, I don't believe savers are losers, contrary to some of some uh, yeah. Robert Kiyosaki, because mm. I do need, believe you do need savings, because you're in Nigeria, you do need to save. Mm. Yes. But also the way it's been uh, presented to us is like, oh, if you're saving money and you have a lot of money saved, oh, then you must be financially astute. Mm. You must be a guru in personal finance. Not mm. necessarily. No. Not necessarily. I yeah. like the so, fact that you also talked about mindset because we need a real shift in our mindset. Yeah. So you, my question to you is, based on the mindset, mm -hmm. when is the right time to introduce individuals or children in the education sector, mm -hmm. for example, to financial literacy? As young as you possibly can. At three years old, your child should understand the concept of savings. Mm. She or he must have a piggy bank. Mm. That's what I had with my son. At three years old, I had him um, with a, he had a piggy bank. When he was one was done, it would, we'll get another. We had, we had him like on three piggy banks. When he gets to six, seven years old, you can open a bank account for him. Let him go through the motion of going to the bank account with you, cashing a check, even if it's a naira check. You know depositing money, let him know the sense of the transactions to be had. And then I started to, I got him a book. Um, first it was School of Money by Pastor Lumi Man, which was a phenomenal book, which he didn't understand, and I didn't expect him to understand. Good. But again, I was dripping. There's something called dripping, you know? Yes. Let him understand. Building his mind. Exactly. And then when it was about seven, eight, I got him a, a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad for Teens. Fantastic. Mm, yeah. He read the book, he understood, he understood, he liked it, he had a lot of questions. And so we sat down and we had that and conversation. So we told, I taught, taught him about real estate, you know, and then paper asset. Although by this time he wasn't even trading. But you know, you are a financial guru. What about those <laughs> that are not financial gurus? And then, okay, so some of the things I also did when he was nine, he started his own business, lemonade business. He was selling okay. lemonade to visitors. Okay. So over the summer, he made about $50 or thereabout. Mm. Um, and then... By ten, the time he was 10 years old, he started trading on the global market. Mm. So he actually does a lot of trading and he does phenomenal. He's actually he does my research for me too sometimes. Now, I understand that maybe because he was in the environment, exactly. he was able to pick up those skills. Mm -hmm. But that's where you need to start from. You need to start from you. You cannot pass on what you don't have. Mm. Now, my mom was a trader. You know, she started as a petty trader and she walked away. I, I wrote a book called Shame Money, which Beautiful was largely book. built Beautiful on her book. character. Exactly. Now, I, that was the extent of my financial knowledge because I knew this woman woke up in the morning, went to work and come back, mm -hmm. came back. Now, even if that's what you start off with your children, I wake up in the morning at six, I need to go to work because mm. money does not go, go, is not in mommy's bag, is in working hard. Mm. Mm. So the children begin to understand because when you want to get your children to the point of not letting them have entitlement mentality. That is the worst state of, of 
that's the worst gift you can give to a child. Hmm. Entitlement mentality. Oh yes. Oh my God, it would destroy that child faster than 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 again than anything else. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because you are teaching them that their hard work, their dependency should all entirely be on you. Yeah. No when the child is growing up, no why can't mm -hmm. you can I tell I tell my children um, value. When you have value, you always attract something. So at this point, they know that the value they can only give mm. to get whatever it is that they want is to do well, you know, their grades and all of that. Exactly. So whatever it is, you must be ready to know that you're exchanging something for something. Mm -hmm. Nothing should just come free. Even when you are going There's for no summer holiday, yes. if we are traveling, have you earned it? You have, have you to earn it? it. You know, have you done well in school? I expect that the, the value I need from you right now is that you do well in your academics. Then exactly. you can now get some other perks that come oh, with absolutely. it. Absolutely. That's exactly. how money should be, actually. Absolutely. You know, it's exchange for value when you've given out value. Let me take out, uh, take some comments. Okay. Polusha says, I always hear we need to respect money. Still don't understand the principle. Kindly ask uh, Mutunrayo to expand on it. Maybe you should start with that, then I'll take others. We need money. So that, we need um, to respect money. Yes, we need to respect money. She, 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 um, he says he still doesn't understand what you mean by respecting money. Well, respecting money is first. You, have to, you need to appreciate money because money is a tool, all right. And if you don't understand how to use money and respect money, it will eventually leave you. We know that mm -hmm. respecting money is not abusing money. It's not spending money on frivolous items. You know, you need to understand that. When you have this money, you can invest it to grow it. That is respecting money. Hmm. Because you are now sending the money on errand to bring back more for you. Okay. But if you say, for instance, now, I decide that I'm, I, I, and this, this is, this happens all the time. When you say you go to somewhere like a, a Walmart or something, you see the aisle for the books. And you see a lot mm -hmm. of these white kids that go there, they start looking at the books. Oh, they gravitate towards the books immediately. Exactly. And you see some other children, they go to the toy section. Mm -hmm. It all comes from the house because you that's how you're raising you your children. That's how you're training them. So you have to be careful. Again, I'm going back to the kids, but I'm going to leave that a step notch. You need respecting money is understanding how to build the money in the first place, hmm. how to make money, how to, how to it. make it last, and mm -hmm. how to multiply. That's mm -hmm. respecting money. Passive income. I think that's my favorite mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how to multiply. We're going to take okay, a break. Is, um, okay. you see. When we take a break, uh, we have more comments and. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, the truth is that today I'm quiet because yeah, I'm learning. Calm, yeah. Oh, yes. You're so calm. No, 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 I'm learning because I love the, <laughs> I love the direction of the conversation. Absolutely. Um, because it, it, it was easy for us to discuss multiplying streams of income. Yes. But no matter how much we multiply, if we do not understand the basics it. of oh, yeah. sustaining mm -hmm. and, you know, growing the income, mm -hmm. then whatever it is that we're multiplying is almost like it's non-existent. You can't multiply. Yes. Exactly. You can't even multiply. You can't even multiply. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.